Welcome to FDT Kristen Lifestyle Channel. Welcome to another captivating episode on our channel where we delve into the depths of ancient biblical wisdom and explore the mysteries of the past. Today, we embark on a journey through the annals of history and scripture to unravel the enigma of the Tower of Babel and the origin of languages. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our explorations of ancient texts and civilizations. Tower of Babel is a story that transcends time, found in the pages of the book of Genesis. It recounts the ambitious endeavor of humanity to build a tower that would reach the heavens, a symbol of human pride and defiance against the divine order. However, as the story unfolds, we learn that God intervenes, confounding their language and scattering them across the earth. This event serves as a pivotal moment in human history, shaping the course of civilizations and influencing the diversity of languages we know today. The intervention at the Tower of Babel is more than just a tale of linguistic confusion. It is a profound demonstration of divine sovereignty and human humility. It reminds us of the limits of human ambition and the importance of humility before the Creator. By dispersing humanity and confounding their language, God humbles the pride of mankind and reminds them of their dependence on Him. It is a powerful reminder that true greatness lies not in the height of our towers, but in the depth of our reverence for the divine. The story of the Tower of Babel also provides insight into the origins of language itself. While linguists and scholars offer various theories, the biblical narrative suggests that the diversity of languages arose as a result of divine intervention, a consequence of humanity's attempt to assert its autonomy. The dispersion of languages at Babel marked the beginning of linguistic diversity, shaping the cultural landscape of humanity and fostering unique identities and traditions across the globe. The Tower of Babel serves as a timeless reminder of the importance of humility, cooperation, and reverence for the divine. It challenges us to recognize the limits of human endeavor and embrace the diversity that enriches our world. By embracing diversity and honoring the unique languages and cultures of humanity, we can bridge the divides that separate us and build a world grounded in compassion, understanding, and mutual respect. The Tower of Babel Bible story is found in chapter 11 of Genesis in just a few verses. This is a summary of the biblical account of the Tower of Babel. You can read more in-depth Bible verses from the scripture below and use the articles and videos to understand the meaning behind this teachable event in the Bible. The descendants of Noah lived in the area of Mesopotamia and Babylon. They settled in a land named Shinar. The population was growing, and they all spoke one language. The people decided to build a tall, proud symbol of how great they had made their nation. The Babylonians wanted a tower that would reach to the heavens so they could be like God and would not need him. They began to construct a great ziggurat. God did not like the pride and arrogance in the people's hearts. God caused the people to suddenly speak different languages so they could not communicate and work together to build the tower. This caused the people to scatter across the land. The tower was named the Tower of Babel because the word Babel means confusion. This story is a powerful reminder of how important it is to obey God's word and not think we can build a successful but godless life on our own. Facts, the Tower of Babel in the Bible. What is the story of the Tower of Babel? The Tower of Babel is a biblical narrative found in Genesis 11, 1, 9. According to the story, after the flood, humanity spoke a common language and settled in the land of Shinar. They decided to build a great city and a tower that reached the heavens to make a name for themselves. Why did God destroy the Tower of Babel? God decided to intervene because of human pride and disobedience. The people aimed to reach the heavens independently, challenging God's authority. To prevent this rebellion, God confused their language, causing them to speak different tongues and scattering them across the earth. Where is the Tower of Babel located today? The exact location of the Tower of Babel remains uncertain, as described in ancient biblical texts. While some theories suggest it could be in the vicinity of ancient Mesopotamia, no definitive archaeological evidence has been found to pinpoint its exact location. What is the main message of the Tower of Babel? The Tower of Babel narrative conveys important messages about human pride, disobedience, and the consequences of challenging divine authority. It teaches humility and emphasizes the need for obedience to God's will rather than pursuing self-glorification and independence. Why didn't God like the Tower of Babel? God was displeased with the Tower of Babel because it symbolized human arrogance and rebellion. The people sought to build a tower to the heavens to make a name for themselves, indicating a desire for self-sufficiency and independence from God. 
God's response was to scatter them and confuse their language, humbling humanity and reasserting divine authority. What was the Tower of Babel? As Nimrod began his reign, he and his followers had one overriding goal for their new territory. They wanted to ensure the security of their community by building a prestigious landmark to make a name for themselves. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11.4 The structure a tower made from man-made building materials would be a symbol of their power and self-sufficiency, and some historians believe that Nimrod had an additional motive for wanting to build the Tower of Babel. In What Was the Sin That Condemned the Tower of Babel? Alyssa Rote offers a quote that gives insight into Nimrod's frame of mind. The ancient historian Joseph states of Nimrod, he also said he would be revenged on God if he should have a mind to drown the world again, for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to be able to reach, and that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers' antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 4. God saw that the people were working together toward a common goal. Unfortunately, the goal they were working toward was steeped in arrogance and in direct opposition to God's command to multiply and fill the earth, Genesis 9-1. In their attempt to maintain unity and create a name for themselves, God's people rebelled against God's sovereign authority and embraced their self-sufficiency. They felt they didn't need God to rule over them. They could rule themselves and reach the heavens on their terms with their own hands by their means. God's justice and his grace could not allow this treachery to continue. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11, 8, 9. The following are excerpts from the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. Location of the Tower of Babel There has been much difference of opinion as to the geographical position of the Tower of Babel. Following the tradition handed down by the Jews and Arabs, most writers on the subject have identified it with the great temple of Nebo in the city of Borsippa, now called the Burj Nimrod explained as a corruption of Burj Nimrod, Tower of Nimrod. This building, however, notwithstanding its importance, was to all appearance never regarded by the Babylonians as the Tower of Babel, for the very good reason that it was not situated in Babylon, but in Borsippa, which, though called in later times the Second Babylon, was naturally not the original city of that name. The erection regarded by the Babylonians as the great tower of their ancient city was Etemen Anakai, the temple of the foundation of heaven and earth, called by Nabopolassar and Nebuchadrezzar Zikrat Babali, the Tower of Babylon, the world-renowned temple dedicated to Merodach and his consort Zerpanidim, Babylon's chief deities. The builders of the tower? The Bible record does not state who the people were who journeyed in the east and built the city and the tower. The indefinite, they, might be taken to mean whatever people were there at the time the record was written and probably presupposes that the reader would certainly know. As the Tower of Babel bears in the native inscriptions a Sumero-Akkadian name, it may be supposed that the builders referred to belong to that race. The meaning of Babel. The place where they built the tower was called Babylon on account of the confusion of languages. Here we have the statement again as in G that the meaning of Babel is confusion. This, as is well known, is based upon the purely Hebrew etymological law which makes Babel to confuse or mingle, assume a reduplicate form. But as far as the cuneiform inscriptions, which are now very numerous, give us information, Babel from Baldlu, to mingle the root in question, was an impossibility. But on the Babylonian side, that the rendering of the name as Bab Ilialani, Gate of God of the Gods, was a folk etymology, is undoubted, notwithstanding that the Sumero Akkadian form Kadingira, with the same meaning, is far from rare. It is noteworthy, however, that one of the forms used by Nebuchadrezzar is Babylon, with the mimation or emming, which is a characteristic of the Babylonian language. Moreover, a place named Babylon also occurs, which may be a still earlier and perhaps the original form. Notwithstanding that one would like to see in Babylon the place of bringing together, and in Babylon the bringer together, the termination M would seem to be an insurmountable difficulty. The ultimate destruction of the tower? The city's building would have been stopped when the confusion of tongues took place, which is natural the departure of the greater part of the inhabitants made this inevitable. When the population increased again, the city's building continued, making Babylon the greatest city in the then known world. 
The tower, despite what had been said about its destruction, remained. When its condition became ruinous from time to time, some energetic Babylonian king would restore it. Alexander and Philip of Macedon began clearing away the rubbish to rebuild the great temple of Beclus Bel Meridach connected with it. There is hardly any doubt that the tower would have been restored likewise, but the untimely death of the former and the deficient mental caliber of the latter for ruling a great empire put an end to the work. The tower therefore remained unrepaired. The tower was exceedingly tall. The third part of it sank into the ground, a second third was burned down, and the remaining third was standing until the time of the destruction of Babylon, Rabbi Yohanan Sanhedrin 109.1. Significance of the Tower of Babel Story Tucked away in the book of Genesis is the story of a massive structure most Christians identify as the Tower of Babel. The scriptural account explaining why God's people built this tower is short and poignant. Rebellious and prideful mankind wanted to do their own thing, but God intervened to stop them, and all the world's diverse languages can be traced back to the fallout from that fateful event. But when we dig deeper into scripture, treasure can be found amid the ruins. Relevant lessons can be excavated from the wreckage of that tower and used as building blocks for modern Christian living. The Tower of Babel, plain and simple, was an act of rebellion against God. This story matters because we see what happens when mankind tries to prevent the acts of God. They tried by their own hands to create their own ark of salvation, their own fortress. The Tower of Babel is a biblical story found in the book of Genesis, specifically in Genesis 11. According to the biblical narrative, after the great flood, people spoke a single language and migrated to the land of Shinar Babylonia. Third, they decided to build a tower that would reach the heavens, intending to make a name for themselves and prevent being scattered across the earth. God, displeased with their pride and ambition, decided to confuse their language so that they could no longer understand each other. This linguistic confusion led to the scattering of the people across the earth, and the tower construction was halted. As a result, the place was called Babel, which means confusion. The story is often interpreted as a cautionary tale about the consequences of human pride and disobedience, as well as a theological explanation for the diversity of languages among humanity. In this article, we'll endeavor to discuss what was the Tower of Babel physically and spiritually and why it matters to us today. What did the Tower of Babel look like? Most likely, the Tower of Babel was something known as a ziggurat structure built by the people of Shinar historians have not come to a conclusion as to the exact location of Shinar. A ziggurat, a pyramid-like structure made of mud brick Genesis 11.3, often had ties with pagan religions such as those of the Babylonians and Marduk. Although Marduk didn't really get his claim to fame until the 1800s BC and answers in Genesis places the construction of the Tower of Babel in 2200s BC, ziggurat structures started around 3000 BC, well before the Tower of Babel construction. Ziggurat structures undoubtedly had pagan roots as they were built for the patron deity of that land. Nimrod Genesis 10.8, Noah's great-grandson and a mighty man or giant who ordered the construction of the tower likely didn't have the best of intentions. Because the people of Shinar wanted to reach the heavens, we can imagine this was a very tall ziggurat structure. Scripture doesn't tell us how far along God let them build the tower before he disrupted their progress. The Tower of Babel by Pieter Brugel, the Elder 1 in 563. Where was the Tower of Babel located? Although we likely don't have the exact coordinates, we can hazard a guess that the Tower of Babel was located in what would later be the Babylon we come to know in 586 BC most likely in modern terms, Iraq. This makes sense given the ziggurat-shaped building in lieu of other similar projects being built in that area at the time. Babylon was slightly different during the time of this construction, as opposed to the Babylon we'll get to know centuries later. But even then, it was a city of depravity and ruin. No wonder the Bible talks so badly about Babylon when we get to Revelation. Babylon consistently appears in the Bible narrative. First, when mankind rebels against God right after the flood, God told humanity to spread throughout the earth, but they stayed put and in defiance built a tower to reach the heavens more on this in a moment. Furthermore, Babylon later sacks Jerusalem in the 6th century BC and makes an appearance in Revelation as the Whore of Babylon. What does the Bible say about the Tower of Babel? Let's take a look at the verses found in Genesis 11, 1, 9, and we'll discuss. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech, as people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. 
Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Notice how they acknowledge that God told them to scatter throughout the earth. He didn't want them to stay in one spot. Nevertheless, they defied him. They built this tower to shake a fist at the sky. In doing so, they wrote the demise of one language. Hence, the reasons why we have so many languages today. It all started with the Tower of Babel. Even when they attempted to defy God, they didn't stand a chance to go against his will. What is the meaning of saving grace? Spiritual meaning of the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, plain and simple, was an act of rebellion against God. Josephus, a historian, points to one of the main reasons that Nimrod ordered the construction of the Tower of Babel was to create a structure tall enough to withstand another worldwide flood like the one seen in Genesis 6 and the story of Noah's Ark. Nimrod appeared to have forgotten the purpose of the flood in the first place. God sent a worldwide flood because of the earth's vast wickedness and depravity. In a way, Nimrod shakes his fist at God saying, I'll create a structure so high that even you can't destroy me. He tries to equate himself with God. Not to mention, the ziggurat structure had deep pagan roots before Nimrod ordered its construction. Therefore, like the people pre-flood, the people of Shinar engage in the things of this world rather than the things of God. Furthermore, the people of Babel didn't follow God's command to spread throughout the whole earth. They settled in Shinar in direct disobedience and began to build this structure they hoped would last. As we see in the Bible, it didn't. Main Themes of the Tower of Babel the story of the Tower of Babel is rich with symbolic and spiritual meanings that have been interpreted in various ways by different religious traditions and scholars. Here are some common interpretations. Pride and Arrogance One of the central themes is the cautionary tale against human pride and arrogance. The people in the story sought to build a tower to make a name for themselves and reach the heavens, displaying a desire for self-exaltation. The consequence of their pride was the confusion of language and the scattering of the people. Disobedience. The story can be seen as a narrative about disobedience to God's will. The people did not follow God's command to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, Genesis 9-1, but instead they gathered in one place with the intention of building a tower to reach the heavens. Unity and diversity. The linguistic confusion resulting in the scattering of people is often interpreted as a way to promote diversity among humanity. While the people initially sought unity through the tower, God's intervention introduced linguistic diversity, emphasizing the importance of embracing differences. God's sovereignty. The story underscores God's sovereignty and control over human affairs. God, as the creator, has the power to intervene in human activities and disrupt plans that go against his divine purposes. Symbolism of the tower. The tower itself can symbolize human attempts to reach God through human efforts as opposed to relying on divine guidance and humility. It serves as a reminder that true spiritual elevation comes from a humble and obedient relationship with God. Lessons in Humility The Tower of Babel story teaches humility and the acknowledgement of God's authority. It suggests that human accomplishments should be aligned with God's will and not driven by a desire for self-glorification. Significance of the Tower of Babel this story matters because we see what happens when mankind tries to prevent the acts of God. They tried by their own hands to create their own ark of salvation, their own fortress. But salvation only comes through God. We can't continue to live in sin and create a Tower of Babel for ourselves, hoping we'll craft a structure high enough to avoid the wrath of God. Maybe we don't build physical mud brick ziggurat structures today, but we do often try to create our own versions of the Tower of Babel. We think, maybe through our good works, maybe through our attending church weekly, maybe through our community services can we build a structure high enough to avoid God's judgment. Yet we learn that God doesn't work that way. A tower can't save us. We need to find salvation through him. We also learn that if we try to directly disobey a command from God, that he will intervene. 
Just like Jonah tried to sail the opposite way from where God called him, God sent a huge fish to swallow him and transport him back to Nineveh Jonah 117. And just like the people of Shinar refused to populate the whole earth and settle, God confused their languages, forcing them to move and fill the earth. A world fallen into sin? In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and everything was perfect. But when sin entered the world through that first couple, mankind began a downward spiral into depravity that would eventually lead them to an awareness of their need for a savior. As Adam and Eve began to be fruitful and multiply, following God's command Genesis 1.28, sin continued to abound. One thousand years later, sin had so overtaken God's creation that he decided to purge humanity with a worldwide flood, sparing only one man, his family, and the animals. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Genesis 5.10. Even after God's flood wiped out the majority of wickedness from the earth, the inherited seed of sin began to corrupt Noah's descendants. One thousand years after the flood, Noah's rebellious great-grandson Nimrod became the first leader of the post-flood world. Nimrod established his kingdom by founding a city on the plain in Shinar, which would later be called Babel or Babylon Genesis 10.10. Many pseudepigraphical and historical writings describe Nimrod as a warrior of great stature and supernatural strength. Still, similar reports also describe Nimrod as a self-absorbed tyrant plagued by bitterness over the flood in God's judgment. What we can learn? In 10 Things Christians Should Know About the Tower of Babel, Hope Bollinger observes, Although we may encounter this story in Sunday school, we don't often hear about it from the pulpit or in our morning devotionals, but we can often see ourselves in the narrative, especially today. Believers must take an introspective look for the tale tell signs of this kind of sin within the church and ourselves. It's easy to read stories from the Old Testament and pass judgment on the waywardness of God's people, thinking that we today are more loyal to God and would never sin in the ways the people at Babel did. But are we truly immune to the temptations they faced? Our country was founded upon the noble pursuit of independence, honor, and autonomy. But while these noteworthy traits are bragging points for our country, they have no place in the church or the kingdom of God. Why? As children of God and citizens of his kingdom, we are called to a submissive relationship with our Lord and Savior, our King. Sin takes over whenever we build our churches or salvation upon any other foundation. When exercised apart from God's sovereign rule, independence becomes arrogance, honor becomes pride, and autonomy becomes idolatry. When we allow politics to bleed over into the structure of the church or the foundation of our salvation, it can become easy to forget where our true allegiance rests. And it makes it much easier to band together with groups of like-minded disgruntled citizens to wage war against and declare independence from the very people our king came to seek and save Luke 19.10. Just like the people of Babel felt justified in and empowered by their pursuit of self-engineered excellence, an autonomous church or Christian can be deceived into believing their own efforts will help them reach the heavens. But the Bible is clear that the only way to reach God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our reliance on him for our salvation and the building of his church is essential Ephesians 1.22, John 14.6, John 3.5. Five interesting facts about the Tower of Babel. The Trinity was represented in the scriptural account of the Tower in Genesis 11. We see God's initial reaction to the building of Babel's Tower. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language, so they will not understand each other. Genesis 11, 5, 7, emphasis added. When the Lord says, Come, let us go down, this is one of the Bible's first hints at the reality of our triune God. Noah was still alive when the Tower of Babel was built according to Scripture. Noah lived 350 years after the flood and a total of 950 years. Genesis 9:28-29. This means he would have been alive during his great-grandson Nimrod's rise to power and the building of the tower. The tower was built in Iraq. The Tower of Babel was built on a plain in the region of Shinar, located in ancient Mesopotamia on the eastern bank of the Euphrates River about 30 miles from modern-day Baghdad. The tower's structure is key to identifying Babel's actual sin. The fact that Noah's descendants chose to build a ziggurat-style tower showed that they had allowed paganism to invade their heritage of faith in the one true God. 
Ziggurats were structures intended to provide stairways from the heavens to earth to provide a convenient means for the gods to come down and visit men. But scripture is clear that man has no means to provide a way for ourselves to reach God, nor do we have any authority to summon God to ourselves. In John chapter 10, Jesus addresses those who try to reach God on their own terms. Very truly, I tell you Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Well, there you have it, all facts about the Tower of Babel from a scriptural perspective. As we conclude our exploration of the Tower of Babel and the origin of languages, may we reflect on the profound lessons embedded within this ancient tale. May we strive to embrace diversity, cultivate humility, and honor the divine order that unites us all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into ancient wisdom. Until next time, may you find wisdom in the biblical stories of the past and inspiration for the journey ahead.